Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release, carving a new legacy that no one has done before. Come back with me to October 1982 and let's play, play what's new. We we're last checking out Frogs and Flies on the Atari home computer, and you probably got this one off of a bulletin board system. So how about an official release of Frogs and Flies? Here you go. This is Frogs and Flies on the Atari VCS. Let's check it out. This is brand new right now. Here's the box for Frogs and Flies. This one marks our 141st game we played on the Atari VCS. That's how many Atari VCS games are out there, cartridges you can play. This is another box by M Network. Same style, all the lines, got frogs and flies in the bottom right corner, like they did with all the M Network releases. Another one. This means that it's a television game that is brought to our home from the Intellivision onto the Atari. You look at the back of the box, we got one or two players that can play. It has day and night cycle. It says day and night action, which really isn't a day and night cycle. But what's weird is it says fun sounds include splash where frogs fall in the pond, happy croak when flies are caught, various bird calls and cricket sounds when game is over. You know it's 1982 when that's the feature, when they're telling you about sound effects. Whoa, blow away awesome. Let's see what other artwork we have for frogs and flies. We got the two different boxes on front and the back. I love the grungy looks of the boxes on all the artwork. There's our Atari VCS and the M Network cartridges or the Mattel brought from the Intellivision cartridges that got that funky look on the Atari VCS and then a reconstructed box along with a screenshot. Here's the manual for frogs and flies. Since this is the Intellivision version brought over to the Atari, this was first in the arcade called just Frogs in October 1978. We kind of talked about it last episode. And then it was brought to the Intellivision called Frog Bog in June 1982. So this is essentially Frog Bog from the Intellivision brought to your Atari VCS. It's a one or two player game and you can actually play at the same time. So both frogs can go at the same time. It continues to talk about day and night action, but it doesn't have the same day and night cycle that it does on the Intellivision. I know, we have to have really cool sounds, otherwise it won't sell the game. It tells you how to uh, uh, set up the game over on the left side here, so when you can, it, it, the day will gradually turn into the night, but it doesn't do this exact same effect that it does on the Intellivision. Make sure you have your controllers plugged in. Atari VCS will work well. This one has no game selects. All you do is difficulty switches to go from an easy game to a hard game, just switching the position from A to B. And then it shows you how to jump the frogs. If you do the hard position, you have all this nuance for controls on controlling your frog. So a lot of cool stuff, and you have to admit, this went from Intellivision now to the Atari VCS. I'm not a big fan of that disc of the Intellivision, but I mean, set me up with an Atari VCS joystick, and we're ready to go. Yes, we don't want to play Toads and Termites, we want to play Frogs and Flies. Completely different experience. So start a new game, hit reset as usual, and then over here on the left side we got some winning tips. Don't fall in the pond. Well, you didn't know that. These frogs are actually better than Frogger. They can survive in the water, at least for a little bit. If you get an easy game... Uh, the tongue is automatically effective. It's more like a way to play with uh, your younger siblings if you do the easy mode instead of doing the hard mode. And then, uh, so they have a screenshot over on the, the, the left side. All right, we know how to play. This one has a few different versions. In Germany, it's known as Die Hingregen Fusche, published by Starsoft. We're going to play from the first version in North America. Here it is, Frogs and Flies. This is by David Rolf, APF Technological Consulting, published by Mattel at the beginning of October 1982. There it is. Gives us the same attract mode we've seen on the Atari VCS. Both frogs are just going at it. I don't have any control, right? Yeah, I got no control right now. We'll go with the easy game mode. I'm going to hit reset. I'm playing a one-player game, so I'm on the left as the gray frog. When I want to use my tongue, I hit the red button, and there it is. And I think I'm playing on easy. Yeah, no matter what I do with the joystick, the frog jumps the exact same way. So this is easy mode, and this is really, really easy. In fact, I think if I time it right, I it'll do the... It, it'll automatically suck in the... Yeah, it automatically does the, the tongue for me. But the objective is just jump back and forth, lily pad to lily pad, left and right, getting as many flies as you can. It's frogs and flies. Even on easy mode, the computer is destroying me. But you can tell the big difference in the graphics compared from the Intellivision to this one. Intellivision really shines. And the day and night cycle, if you want to call it a cycle, uh, looks a lot better too. So we're already catching up. Got 10 to 12... But this easy mode is so easy. I don't. It, whatever I do on the joystick, whether I go up, down, left, or right, it, it does the exact same jump 
on, on each side. Okay, there you go. It's starting to change to night. So this one doesn't have a way you can play at night. On the Intellivision, you could. This one just essentially goes from day to night, and then once it hits night, then you know that it's done. You know, so I'm trying to get as many points as I can before it hits night. It looks like the computer might get me. There we go. Got it. Got it ahead. Same kind of concept that we saw uh, last episode, Frogs and Flies on the Atari. I really like the control playing on that one, but that was kind of a, um, a freeware issue that you would have found on bulletin board systems or wherever you could find it at this time. I know, right? Hitting hard mode is the way to go. But yeah, it looks like we'll win this one. All right, I'm going to switch the difficulty switches and let's hit reset. I won't see the end uh, of this one. Now let's go with, look at this. Whoa, the nuance. Now I'm at, still the gray frog, but whoa. The control is really, really, uh, like, um, it, it, it's, if I tap the joystick really, really light, the frog does little hops like this. So I'm just messing around with the control as the gray frog. If I want to go for a long jump, you hold down the joystick. And just like they had in the manual, whatever you do with the direction you want the frog to go, you have a lot more control over it. And the control for the frog, I would say, is better than the Intellivision. Wow, yeah. The way this controls compared to using the disc and, um giving you more options for the jump plays much better than the uh, Intellivision version. Oh yeah, we haven't played that version yet. So far, that's the only versions of Frogs and Flies we've played. The official one in the arcade, the Frog Bog on Intellivision, and then the one we played last episode on the Atari home computer. Yeah, this harder difficulty mode is really, really cool. I haven't felt a Atari VCS game played like this where it it really depends on how long you hold the joystick. And you have all these different directions, so you can actually time how to get the... And the flies are flying in different ways. So really, really interesting comparing the two console versions. When we played the Frog Bog version on the Intellivision, I said three and a half stars of all the games you could play on a home console. This one doesn't look as good as that. But this one plays better than the Intellivision. So it has some merits that are really, really good, but then some merits that are, I mean, like if, if you want to consider the graphics as a downside, it does look a lot better on the Intellivision and you have the option to play at night, which was difficult because you couldn't see the frogs with the black of night. And that's true, Manly, you can change the difficulty where one player's playing on the harder difficulty and one player's playing on the easy. Great for younger siblings, set them up and they're just going to do the same jump over and over again and you can work on the nuance of frogs and flies as you move around yeah but this one controls better than the intellivision i'm having more fun controlling this than on the intellivision yep and there it is changing tonight we're running out <laughs> the other frog is destroying me i'm just having fun uh, hopping around and jumping around as a frog i'd like to know from the chat when we played this in the arcades back in 1978, would you consider this a platformer? Or is this considered just an arcade-style game? We usually didn't say platformer until we saw the Panic game, Space Panic, because it is from a side view, and it, this one is essentially jumping back and forth, but we usually can think of platformers as things like, you know, Donkey Kong, being able to run and jump on a platform. Well, you are jumping, you're hopping on a, on a platform. Yep, it's already night. We're running out. Yeah, mainly I have categorized all these as arcade style rather than a platform game. There we go, nice. <laughs> he streamed. Yes, it's a fixed shooter. Your tongue is just like playing Galaxian. So there you go, that's a taste of Frogs and Flies, the latest that you can play on your Atari VCS. I would still give this one of all the titles you could play on a home console three and a half stars. It's the same rating as the Intellivision, but the merits of the Intellivision are why it's good and the merits of why the control of the Atari is why it's good. I see the last chat, we got three and a half. <laughs> a lily pad former. Yes, make a new genre, I love it. So cool. All right, so after Frogs and Flies, let's see what our next title is. It's time to go to the United Kingdom and play on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. This is Galaxians. Plural, not just Galaxian. It's more than one. Let's take a look at the cassette case for Galaxians. Wow, that, that cassette case is crisp. 
It looks so sci-fi-ish. Let's flip it over on the other side and see if we have any other artwork for Galaxians. Besides the box, we also have the inside sleeve and another different box that came out later. Look at that. It even has the targeting reticle of the X-Wing <laughs> on the front of this one. Uh, both of these boxes are by Arctic. You can see it's the, uh, I think this is the first one and the, 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 the one we saw before. This one is the later one, but it just gives you some loading instructions over on the side with the cassette tape that we're going to pop into play on our ZX Spectrum. This one marks our 98th game we've played on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. It's not going to stop anytime soon. The manual is just a homemade manual. You can see here the different difficulty levels. And this one is going to be pretty self-explanatory once we boot the game up. So we don't need that. It's essentially what the inside sleeve of the cassette held. There's lots of alternate versions of this one. It was released later by Profisoft in Germany. Let's pop it and play some Galaxians. This is by Arctic Computing. It's sometime at the beginning of October 1982. This one marks the 18th game we played by Arctic Computing and the 8th game by Arctic Computing on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And there he is, William Ray. Way to go, William. The only other game we've seen so far that's been developed by him was ZX Galaxians. And uh, that was on the ZX81. So here we go on the ZX Spectrum. We're moving up in the world. All right, so you can see the controls are going to be caps to or caps to uh, or shift to move left, Z to move right, and space to fire. And those controls are going to be pretty much what we're going to see for a lot of shooters now on the ZX Spectrum. Not all the shooters we've seen so far have been that way. And then there's our our scores down below. Let's go into it. What level do we want? We are pros here. I'm going to go level eight. And then we can do one or two players. If you do two players, it's alternate play. I'm just going to go for one right now. And we're in. So keyboard controls only, no joystick control right now, but wow, the colors of the ZX Spectrum, this just pops. Even though I'm dying, I mean, this is really good for a Galaxian game. The controls are very, very simple, but I mean, the way that the colors look on the screen, everything's moving, I would say, in a slower pace. Looks like we're really pushing the ZX Spectrum, but I did pump the difficulty up. If we go to an easier difficulty, then we don't have as many movement or waves of enemies. I'm playing this on the 48K Spectrum, and it's still, like, pushing. <laughs> I know, Paul. If you think your ears hurt now, just wait. We'll be much worse ones later. Moving left, right, and fire. We've done this quite a bit on the show. We call these fixed shooters. Started back even before Space Invaders. We saw a few games that did this. And this one marks the... 346th fixed shooter we played on the show across all platforms. On home computers, this is our 185th fixed shooter that we played. And on the ZX Spectrum, this computer, this is the ninth fixed shooter that we played. All right, let's bring the difficulty down a little bit. Let's see if it does a little better. Let's go with uh, difficulty level two, still do a one player game. That actually uh, give props for the sound. It's it's pretty good for the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> oh, you, you don't like the sounds? Yeah, I know. The the color clash of the ZX Spectrum starting to bleed in on the sides. But I mean, uh, it's really not as bad as I know what some of the later titles on the ZX Spectrum will be like. But after going from the arcade to this, and if you only had a ZX Spectrum, this is very impressive. I, ha I have to emphasize that if this is what you had, you, you would enjoy this. You'd have a lot of fun playing this. I know, and your character sprite for the ship is huge. I'm going to go with level 1 and see if it gets even slower. Or easier. But I mean, it looks like Galaxian. I love how uh, fresh the colors look. Very, very bright and vibrant. Okay, there we go. So we got less waves coming in. It feels more like I'm playing Space Invaders right now on level one of Galaxians. And that's a good point. We don't have uh, the Spectrum 128K yet. 
That's far too much memory. Right now, the most memory we've ever seen that any game needed on any home computer has been 64K. And that's far too much. No one needs more than 64K right now. Then you're just overdoing it. If you buy more than 64K on your micro, that's... That's just wasting money. I feel like I would want to overpower this, but playing this now, while you would say, you know, the slowdown uh, would, would be a downside, it's actually not too bad. Um, of the games that we played that are fixed shooters on the ZX Spectrum, uh, there has been already about three games that are Galaxian variants that play like Galaxian. The best one we played was Arcadians, but I still would give this the nod. I would say this one plays better than Arcadians, as far as like a faithful port for um, uh, Galaxian. Now, the Arcadians game, it was a little different. It was, you know, a variant of Galaxian. It also moved a little brisker, but the color wasn't as, as good, and the flickering was a lot higher in that one. Let's see, we're, it looks like he's following the same pattern here. Let's see if I can get in there. Nope. Get in there. No! It better not be my last one. Is it my last one? Oh, yeah, one more. One last ship. Mono a mono. There we go. Nice. <laughs> and then it continues to repeat. Goes on after that. This one of all the games we played for games that play like Galaxian, not official Galaxian, but games that play like Galaxian. This is our 75th game. So the 75th anniversary of games like Galaxian right here on the ZX Spectrum. There you go. Very cool. So um, of all the games you can play right now on home computers, now the ZX Spectrum isn't one of the best home computers when you consider everything that's out there. If you want to play Galaxian style games, the really good ones that are out there right now are the Arcade Machine. That one is way up there because you can design your own Galaxian-style game. And we also have AE, that's borderline between Galaxian-style games and Galaga-style games. And then uh, games like Bandits, that we've seen recently, are, are very good Galaxian-style games. Because this one's true to the arcade, like it looks a lot like the arcade, I'm looking over in the chat and I see some ratings around three stars. Um, that's right, no flag at the bottom. That's right, Curtis. Mostly average scores. I'm actually going to say above average because of how close it is, or close as it can get to being like galaxian uh, I'm going to say three and a half stars of everything you can play right now on a home computer. As far as the ZX Spectrum, though, this is tops. This would be better than Arcadians. And as far as shooters go, while it has a little bit of slowdown, this one is uh, very well done for the arcade. I'm seeing mostly average from the chats. Scruffy looking, throwing out three stars, too. I won't be uh, around. I'd say it's above average of all the games you can play right now on a home computer. Well done, Specky. Well done. All right, so after that, let's see what our next title is. Coming up next, we're still going to hang out in the United Kingdom. We're on the Sinclair ZX81, and this is The Gauntlet. Now, the ZX81 is also available, uh, known in North America as the Timex Sinclair 1000. This one marks our 86th sixth game we played on the ZX81 or Timex Sinclair 1000. Let's see what The Gauntlet has for us. Not Gauntlet, THE Gauntlet. Front of the box is pretty generic sci-fi fodder again. It says, Can you run The Gauntlet? Funny. This is by Colormatic Computing. This is the very first game we've seen published by this company. So this is their first time, their first debut. Let's see what they can do. There you go. You can see it's just the cassette case for the gauntlet. What else do we have for the gauntlet? Besides that, if you open the inside sleeve, you got a lot of instructions right here above my shoulder, including the controls, Q, W, A, and S. It's keyboard controlled only, and you got two keys to drop uh, lasers and pl uh, plasma bombs is what it describes over on the side. It even has some tactical advice on the instructions and, of course, loading instructions because we're playing on a home computer. Let's pop it and play the gauntlet. This is by Colormatic Computing. It's sometime in the beginning of October 1982. That's right, Manly. You totally called it. We're running the program and we're going. All right, so this one, I'm going to have to do all keyboard controls. You can do one or two players, but it is alternate play. So I'm just going to go one and we're in. Scramble. Let's see what scramble again is like on the ZX81. So my controls are actually diagonal movements. You can see right there. And I have, uh, there's my bomb. My bomb is a semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the ZX81 is awesome. So I got my firing in front. Yep, uh, sorry, it, it, it's already working. Auto, auto scrolling forward. Let's see if I can. Oh, I didn't break it. Break it through. So uh, it, it's scramble that we've seen in the arcades from uh, 1981. Coming home again. 
This one marks the 45th Scramble variant we've played across all platforms. And this one is no sound because we're on the ZX81. You know, I'm going to move forward. So the controls, uh, each key lets you do a diagonal movement. But if you push or hold down both keys at the same time, then you'll move. Like if you push um, W and S at the same time, then you'll move forward, you know, straight forward. And if you move, uh, hit Q and A at the same time, then you move backwards. But all of the other keys are diagonals, which I found that interesting. In, in the United Kingdom, a lot of the computers we play on, they give you diagonal movement as the default instead of uh, usual like a d direct north, south, east, and west movement. The ZX Spectrum and ZX81 have done that more frequently than other games. All right, let's go one. One of those missiles, they always get you. With no sound, if you if you pit this up against all the other home computers out there, I mean, we just played a Frischl Frogger. You heard all the music coming from that? It does feel a little bit silent here in space, playing the gauntlet. But I like the challenge. I love Scramble. And you look down the bottom, it has different phases. So it gives you that, oh, look, it has the boss at the end. I, I'm, I'm guessing that's what B is after you go through the five different levels. It gives you a great incentive to press forward, keep going, see if you can survive. <laughs> I'm not doing very well surviving the gauntlet. And remember, we're playing this on the ZX81 keyboard. And that one is not even uh, like the spongy chiclet. Key like, this is like a membrane keyboard that you have to play this on. So very, very difficult. Oh, those missiles are random. Wow. I'm still having fun with it because I just love scramble games. I know, right? To see the horizontal scrolling movement, it's pretty good. So Curtis has already thrown out two stars of all the games you could play right now on a home computer. I know, right? There's no, nothing like the gauntlet that everyone else is thinking of. I actually think this is the second game called Gauntlet. Did we, we already played another one on the Coco, I believe. And it's just teasing us. All the games called Gauntlet, we think it's something else. I'll pretend I don't know what that game is. Scruffy Looking's throwing out two and a half stars of all the games you could play right now on a home computer. I mean, what other game have we played that you can throw out semicolons to bomb other things? Only here. Look, the deadly semicolons coming. Yeah, that's right, Curtis. It was teasing us. All right, let's see if we can back ourselves. Okay, I know what I got to do. I'm going to move forward. <laughs> yeah, not comma. This is semi, semicolon. They're, gonna, they're coming at you. Go, go, go. I'm going to move forward and bait them and then pull back and see if it works. Oh, man. God, that's so tricky. Yeah, the the way that they got the missiles tagged is very, very well done. I love the challenge. While we haven't got very far, I still had a blast playing this because I want to see what the next screen is. And I've said that with every Scramble game, so the gauntlet's still a, a fun time. If you had only the ZX81, if you haven't got the ZX Spectrum yet, this is still really, really good. All right, there you go. That's the gauntlet. Now, to put you in perspective of the landscape right now with Scramble games, I already told you how many Scrambles we got. Of the 45 Scramble-like games we've played since the arcade, the ZX81 already has four Scramble games. So this one is the this one's the fourth game that plays like Scramble. So we've already played a few of them that are kind of like this. This one is the best of all those games that we played already on the ZX81. The other ones we played were QS Defender, not like Defender at all, Avenger, and QS Scramble. Avenger was all right, but... Um, QS uh, Defender and QS Scramble were okay. Scramble was uh, a little rough, but this one is the best one you could play right now on the ZX81. If you want to think of all the home computers, though, with Scramble games, the best Scramble that's out there is Sea Dragon on the TRS-80 and Apple II, Neptune on the Apple II, Strike Force on the TRS-80, and then K-Star Patrol, just to name a few of the really good ones. So of all the games you could play right now on a home computer, I would still say around average, maybe even subpar because of the sound. So looking over in the chat, I see Manly thrown out three, but I know you love the ZX81 Manly. Paul saying three overall, yeah, two and a half. Yeah, the best scramble. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, Curtis, you think it's the best one ever? We, we haven't seen the future. We just know right now. I see two and a half from Brian as well. Yeah, so I'm going to say it's 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 a very good version of scramble. I'm still going to say uh, average. So three stars of all the games you can play right now on a home computer because it gives you that ability to see level by level and go what's next. And the controls were okay. I wasn't giving it the best justice, but it was using, you know, that uh, mainframe uh, or uh, me membrane keyboard there. All right, so after the gauntlet, we'll be right back after this commercial break.
game. Defender. I played on ColecoVision. Activision. I played on ColecoVision. Mattel's M Network Wait, and what? Imagine. We played them on ColecoVision. Introducing ColecoVision's first oh, expansion there it module is. that lets you play all Atari 2600 compatible cartridges. And with all of ColecoVision's what? cartridges, that means you can play more games than any other video game system. It's simple. No you can play way. Atari 2600 cartridges on ColecoVision, but you can't play ColecoVision on Atari. ColecoVision. The expansion. Oh my goodness. Did you just hear that? Did you see that? We've already kind of talked about this. That's the expansion module for the ColecoVision. And they were saying they could play all the games by Activision, all the games on the Atari on your ColecoVision. And they are not lying. Right now, Atari's legal team is going after ColecoVision. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the release of Ladybug on your ColecoVision. Not only can you play Atari on your ColecoVision, you can also play Ladybug. Let's take a look at the box. Oh yeah, just like all the other releases we've seen on the ColecoVision, it plays like the real arcade game, at least all the boxes say. And for the most part, all the ColecoVision games are correct. It is not a lie. They're playing like the real arcade game. Ladybug we originally saw in the arcades in 1981, programmed by Kazutoshi Ueda. And we saw uh, a, a, a variant of Ladybug, I'm going to call it a variant, uh, when we played Dordon in the arcade just recently. And this is the very first time that you could play Ladybug at home. Um, Honestly, most people didn't he hear or play Ladybug in the arcades. It wasn't, as, it wasn't as popular. This is where most people played Ladybug. And this was made, made it shine. You can see the arcade cabinet there on the front of the box. Let's flip it over on the back. Nice. Your control of a hungry Ladybug. So not Miss Pac-Man. You're a hungry Ladybug. Helping her traverse a tricky maze, gobbling up small and large dots, just like Pac-Man or arcade maze games. You have turnstiles that you have to go through the doors, be quick about it. And will Ladybug gobble up all the dots and thwart the pursuers or become a tasty tidbit for them? And just like the others, it plays sounds and scores just like the arcade game. And I will attest to that by showing you the game. Here's the other artwork we have for a Ladybug. Whether you got the old or new box, there it is, the ColecoVision with the derpy joystick right here behind my head. The numbers do nothing. <laughs> they, they, they should have put them on the console, maybe. There's the cartridge for Ladybug that we're going to pop in and play. I know all this pre-Atari, uh, all that stuff coming. This one is like anti-crash. Whenever I play games on the ColecoVision, I just like, this is the, the future. These are amazing games. It's like playing in the arcade. And I just know what the future will be like. There's an example of the screenshot. I don't want to spoil too much. Let's take a look at the manual for Ladybug. This one marks our seventh game we played on the ColecoVision. So there's only seven official games you can play, but you heard from the ad, you don't have to play those seven games. You can be playing all the games that Atari has on the ColecoVision. That blows my mind. Imagine if you were, imagine right now if Nintendo's games, you could play all of them on an Xbox. No one, no one, no one would, it wouldn't happen. You, you, you can't do that. But only right now in, in 1982. So there it is. There's Ladybug winking at us. It's the fast-paced maze game. Here's how you attach it all up to your CRT television, most likely doing RF. At least that's what they're showing here. Shows us our, the controller, the control stick, which doesn't feel the same as the joystick on the Atari VCS, or maybe I'm just biased to the Atari VCS joystick. You can do a one- or two-player game, but it is alternate play. You don't play at the same time. Keypads just to select what game you want, and the control stick moves around, but that's all you need. Ladybug just needs a control stick. The choice is yours, how to play. It shows us a screenshot with everything that we got to do. The hearts, the skulls, the timing border when enemies come out. Letters to pick up because if you spell special and extra, then you get multipliers. And that's where the score or where this game really shines. You can see where the turnstiles are, the predatory insects coming after us, and us as the titular ladybug. Dodge predatory insects and then move turnstiles to block them. And you can also earn the extra points and bonuses. And it shows us the scores, but yeah, it's really, really cool. The more you play this game, the, the, the score and the way the game is scored is really fun. You can see picking up all the letters, getting extra bonuses there. And then as usual, ColecoVision tells us the fun of discovery is not just here in the manual. you got to play the game more and find out more. Yeah, I really love that art by, that Universal did. All right, let's pop in and play Ladybug. This one's by Coleco Industries, ported over officially by Universal. The beginning of October 1982 on your ColecoVision. All right, so this one is going to be where most ColecoVision games always give you that big blue screen and then what skill level you want. So we're going to go with skill one, one player. If you do two players, you got to take turns anyway, so it really doesn't make a big difference. All right, so I'm pushing one. Here we go. 
Oh, there it is. Points. Nice. Oh, great. Got the music going already. So you don't technically pick up dots like you do in Pac-Man. It's like little tiny X's or asterisks. But you got to pick them all up. You got a timer going around the outside. As soon as the timer reaches the end, one of the bugs comes out on the field. Avoid those skulls. Don't pick those up. But now you can start using the turnstiles a little to your favor. Organizing them in a way to pick up more of the letters. You can see I'm trying to pick up everything for extra. There's the A over there. And you see over on the right side, that's one of the only biggest differences between this graphically and the arcade is on the right we have this giant screen showing the... See, I blocked him in and kept him from coming at me. But over on the right, they're showing the uh, the bonuses the, and, the, and the specials. The arcade did not have that. But man, this is fun. Obviously, it's a Pac-Man variant. Plays kind of like Pac-Man. You see how I blocked him in? I'm see if I can get him to go around. No, he won't go that way. Okay, fine. I'll go up here, and you see the, another one's about to come out. I gotta be quick. Fast, fast, fast. Work away on this side, and there. First level is done. Oh, thanks, Chris. That's right. It also shows that as well. So this means right now, you could be playing Ladybug. And when you get tired of Ladybug, you could pop in Pitfall on your ColecoVision and play Pitfall after playing this. That's 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 the world that is ColecoVision right now in 1982. Eventually, later that expansion pack and the lawyers are going to get to them, and then they're going to end up making. I think the, the the Coleco Gemini or try to make that system when it comes out. Yeah, so all the enemies just get faster and faster. It is a classic arcade maze game like Pac-Man. You know, move around, pick everything up. I'm going to hurry and get past this. See if I can block him in. All right, that's looking all right. And you kind of have to... Yeah, you got to be fast. Notice how I lured him into the side there. Block him in. He looks good down there. Nope, keep him blocked. Then go for all these over here. And we're ready to go. That's so much fun. That's right. Or you could pop in your Atari Pac-Man and realize, I'm so glad I got a ColecoVision instead of an Atari VCS. <laughs> You see the timer on the outside is going way faster now. We got different enemies, so you have uh, different enemy types. You have um, th these turnstiles, which I would argue is more compelling than Lock and Chase, which is another Pac-Man variant that you could play, which also is on the Atari VCS, and it was also on Intellivision. Uh, that's what you can't play. You can't play in television on your uh, ColecoVision because they knew if they wanted to get one system to be able to play on ColecoVision, they needed the Atari VCS. More people had that one. Okay, barely chat trapped them in there. And you can see we have ways we can lure them in to uh, kill them off, too. All right, I'm going to make this one quick over here on the side. But after playing this one in the arcades and then going to ColecoVision, this is amazing. This is so good. So much fun. And think of that Pac-Man on the Atari VCS is out right now. People are enjoying the bad version of Pac-Man on their Atari, and this is available. All right, we got one more. Get it. There we go. Nice. <laughs> And it plays, sounds, and scores just like the arcade. Now I'm thinking of all the ColecoVision games we played. How many of them have really lied to us? All the all that Coleco has lied to us is on other systems. But here on the ColecoVision, there's no lying. These games, I mean, th th you, you, you buy the system with Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong really does look like the arcade. It's packed in with a killer app. It should have done even better, right? Oh, they got me. <laughs> Alright, there you go. There's a taste of Ladybug on the ColecoVision. Incredible. It is so, so good. Um, this one we would call a top-down arcade maze game or a single-screen arcade maze game. On uh, consoles, we've already played several of these. They're obviously taking uh, inspiration from Pac-Man, but there's other variants of Pac-Man that are like this. Um, the best ones you can play right now on home consoles, the top of the top, I would say, would be Incredible Wizard on the Astrocade, but that one involves shooting. 
Uh, Lock and Chase is available on the Intellivision and the Atari VCS. Maze Craze is on the Atari VCS. KC Munchkin, of course, on the Magnavox Odyssey is a really good maze game that's like this. And then Night Stalker on the Intellivision is really, really good, really fun. And then on the Arcadia 2001, you could also be playing Turtles and Turpin. This one, I would say, is better than all of those, except Incredible Wizard. I'd say still for the maze, Incredible Wizard's adding way more on the Astrocade, but this is still an exceptional title. I'm going to actually rate this the same we rated the, the arcade version of Ladybug, four and a half stars, but here on consoles, it's still one of the best games you could play on a home console. Looking over the chat, Curtis is saying four or four and a half stars. I see lots of fours, so excellent game to play on a home console. I'm going one more to say, if you played maze games or arcade style, this one's classic, plays just like the arcade, and one of the reasons why ColecoVision is tops right now. So there you go, four and a half stars for Ladybug on the ColecoVision. That's where we got to put our video game playing on pause. Put the controller down. Stop playing Atari games on your ColecoVision. We've played games with demons. we played games with devils, but we want something hardcore. We, like, we've even gone to, to hell on Lucifer's Realm, but we want something more metal. Next time on Chronologically Gaming, we're going to the arcades to play a game with Satan himself. That's it for today, and like I always say, you play what you get, and you don't throw a fit. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.